first off the death and graduate. It is the escape that captured St. Louis social media. Cows on their way to slaughter slipped away and made a run for it. When police tried to corral them, they split up and set off multiple slow speed chases, eluding officers through neighborhoods, business parks, and parking lots. The roundup process to separate them from their mothers, transport them to the slaughterhouse, was most likely very, very traumatizing. I don't know for sure, but I'm imagining that they were trying to find their moms in their home. Over the next several hours, they ran through the streets of St. Louis and made a really good effort to escape, but were ultimately rounded up and sent back to the slaughterhouse. There had been some aggressive phone calls and very upset people threatening and saying that they had to release these cows. They urged the slaughterhouse owner to please hold them for a few days to see if a sanctuary could come and get them. We were contacted by David and Kelly Backus and said that they fear that there isn't anyone who's going to be able to get these cows out. They asked us, is there anything that you can do to step in and help? Kelly won't take credit for this, but she connected the dots at the end and reached out to Jay and Ellie at the Gentle Barn. The Gentle Barn's mission is to teach people kindness to animals, each other, and our planet. We rescue animals that nobody else wants, heal them, and give them sanctuary for the rest of their lives. And then when they're ready, the animals help us heal people with the same stories of abuse and neglect. The connection between animals and people um, is such a comforting, non-judgmental place. You can find healing with that kind of relationship because it's easy. There's been a lot of back and forth. There were other sanctuaries that were saying that they wanted to step in, but then ended up not doing it. And uh, it was starting to really upset the meat packing guy. He was getting to the point where he was gonna slaughter them. Well, I think that's it right there. Either I was gonna take the cows that day or they were, they were gonna kill them. There was no tomorrow for them. Yeah, they're pretty, they're, they're still pretty small. Yeah, yeah. Feeders, you know, they, that's all they do is feed and eat again. Yeah. We had to use them as the transporter because I had no time to put anything together before that. I was kind of at their mercy on how they were gonna load them and things like that. It was frustrating to watch, but I just knew that the end result was gonna be that we would get them out of there. Hello? Hi. Hi, what's happening? I got them. <laughs> They're safe. We're trucking them over to the temporary property now. I, I'm, I'm concerned about this black one because he's the only one laying down. He's the only one that's got this hyperactive breathing. You could very clearly see that there was just something not right with him. I had to get them to like a vet hospital because they were hit with cars and they. I didn't know this information before I was here. Maybe he has a broken rib, I, I don't know. went through a huge ordeal, so any kind of injuries or things like that we need to discover now. A majority of the time, the animals that I see that are going to slaughter are sick. All six of them, they, they all had E. coli problems, bacterial infections. Things were not in a good place. After several tests, they found a fractured ankle. And so they set it, they cast it, they put him on pain meds. We were then able to transport him into the foster home to be with his brothers. We assessed him at the farm and decided that um, we really needed to bring him into the hospital to see what was going on because he looked much worse than he had the week before. 
He was in more pain. He started having mobility issues. Some of his limbs started swelling. We were not heading in the right direction. We have to get back to why did this happen? That's the biggest battle we're fighting because there is something underlying that started all of this. The blood work showed that Spirit had an internal infection. That point in time that we sort of knew that we were in trouble and that Spirit had something kind of deep inside somewhere that we couldn't necessarily find at this point and it was showing evidence that it was spreading this infection to the rest of his body. What the veterinarians were saying was because of all these other factors, there, there's not enough we can do to save him. It's very hard for the caregivers to have to go through euthanasia, but for the receiver, doing it in, here in the hospital in a controlled environment when he's not in pain is, is to me a gift. I don't know if it was because he was having a hard time that he was so sweet, you know, whereas the other ones are more standoffish, he was more available. And so I got closer with him. And so it was obviously that that made it even more devastating to lose him. But Spirit will not be forgotten, and in his memory, we are starting a gentle barn in St. Louis to be home for his brothers and serve the community with our programs. Well, starting a new gentle barn is a little bit scary. I mean, are we gonna be able to fund it? I think that whenever any business or nonprofit expands, there's the feeling of, oh God, <laughs> are we gonna be okay? So we put the GoFundMe together, we kind of held our breath, and then, as the weeks unfolded and as the numbers kept rising, we started relaxing like, oh my God, we, we might be able to do this. It gains momentum very quickly and it gets really exciting really fast where people are sharing it and they're writing notes to us. It just, ha it kind of takes on a life of its own. But when we hit the mark and knew we could buy this property, it was such a celebration. People are coming out on their days off to work their butts off to be part of this love for animals and part of this community. It's just a wonderful feeling doing this work with so many beautiful people. We've set up the pastures for the cows to come home to the gentle barn. It took a lot of backbreaking work for a month to uh, get everything together and we were able to pull it off. And they're coming home tomorrow. It's really exciting. Let's go, babe, it's 6.05. Okay, we're coming. Today we're gonna go bring the St. Louis Six home. Forever. All right. I'm so excited, I, I can't stand it. Darn it. Hey, Alan. Good to see you again. Hi. Hi, sweethearts. You gotta go this way, okay? We're just giving them a second to figure things out. There you go. Finally today we get to end their journey here and they'll become part of our family. We all want to be happy and peaceful. We are designed to find happiness and peace. Now we get to watch them learn to trust. We hope their stories will open people's hearts and minds, helping the gentle barn fulfill its mission. 